Okay, we are live for part three. Hopefully you're hydrated, you're staying with me. Um, the last two videos made sense and we're at a point now where we can start looking at branches. Uh, we might even get to emerge in this video, uh, but there's quite a lot to talk about. I really want to break down a lot of the Git uh, nomenclature to really make it make sense. Um, so let's go back to the terminal. Okay, so... In the last video, we looked at a very basic example of how we can add files to stage in, how we can commit them to the local Git repository, then how we can push them to the remote repository. So we really need to start thinking um, in, in, in multiple stages. So if I add a file to this repository, it's going to come in untracked. So let's just quickly get an overview of where we are this repository with the Git status command. So we're up to date. Uh, we pushed in the last video. So if I add a file to this repository, let's really drive this point home, echo, new file, and we'll call this one uh, 1.md. Uh, as we add a file, it's untracked. As we use the git add with either the file name or the dot, um, and in a minute we're actually potentially going to look at the, um, the dash p option and the dash i option. Um, Look at more interactive ways of making sure that we only um, when, when we're on larger projects will make more sense but sometimes we need to be sure that we're actually pushing up the right parts of our code um, so we'll, we'll probably go to this in a minute I don't want to go too fast for everyone if, if we're trying to follow on so um, so we can add our file um, with the git uh, add and then use either one or all the files with the dot um, in this case I'll just do one once we've added a file, it becomes now uh, inside Git's internal tracking system, so Git's now aware of it. Uh, before we use the Git add, um, let me just put my uh, camera back on, um, so I'm talking my hand. So when we use the Git add, okay, Git's, before we use the Git add, Git's aware there's a file inside the actual folder, and it's saying, look, this file's untracked, but as soon as we use the Git add, it's saying, okay, I now have this file and I'm starting to track it. I'm starting to include this in version control. Okay, so once we've done that, now we can use git status. And you can see now that it has knowledge of the file and it's ready to be committed. And at this moment, we'd call this the file is staged. Okay, so the file is staged, but the file's not committed. Okay, so we can then go um, git. And actually, what we should do is just show how to undo. So we can do that stage file, and we should do one. So when we do that, git status, you can see we're back to where we were. Okay. Um, so let's just do git add with a dot this time. Uh, git status, you can see now the file's ready to be committed. It's now staged. So now we can do git commit. If we don't add the dash m option, it will prompt us for a message. And you can see here, we can have a multi-line message. Um, I could say, added a file uh, called 1.md. Now, obviously, we're doing lots of contrived examples in these videos just to understand the working of Git. Um, when you're actually working in a team, you need to make sure your, your, your comments are, again, you might not be working in a team, I should say, but like if you are working a team, um, you really need to make sure that you have good Git hygiene. So um, good naming. Um, oh, I'm going to sneeze in. Um, good naming. Um, try and make sure that you, um, again, we'll get to this um, uh, when we look at pruning branches and pruning uh, 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 in the later video, but um, you really want to make sure that you're working within that team and what you do on your box and what you push up um, doesn't make detrimental changes or make other developers or other consultants jump through hoops. So um, we'll, we'll get to that in future videos, but um, try and make your comments uh, in here really useful for when you come back and look at the project. Um, so I'm just going to save this how here. Okay, so now we've committed that. Uh, control L again, get status. I'm going to stop saying Control L, but I'm just driving home because I know a lot of um, people use the clear command and it's, and it's obviously, you, you can see what it's doing. I'm just using the uh, Control L. So you can see now uh, that we're back to this stage again where our branch is uh, one commit ahead of what the remote repository has. And if we go back to the remote repository, um, you can see here that we've got the two commits. If I just refresh again, so I have two commits. 
and uh, we don't have knowledge of that last commit. So if I go back to the terminal, I can actually git push, and I want you to get in the habit of actually setting the remote. So in this case, the remote's called origin. And as we looked in the last video with the git remote command, we can see what the origin name is. And then we want to have the branch. So in this case, we have main. Okay. So if I go back to the browser, you can see now we've added a file called 1.md. And when you look at these commits, these two here happened on the command line. And my git config at a global level has been set with a user called Billy Dev. However, our initial commit was done in the browser as evil saint hyphen YouTube user. So if we if we wanted to change this, we could do this with the git config command. So I, I better show you this before we move on so it can make more sense. Um, this, this name here is obviously what everyone else is gonna see in the commit history and the, and the git logs. So you really want this to be um, something that identifies you if you're working in a team. Uh, let's go back to the terminal quickly. Um, we'll just do control L, uh, git config. Now, when you do the git config, you can do this at a global level or you can do it at a local level, okay? In this case here, I'm gonna do it at a global level, but what you need to remember is if you do this at a global level, this will affect your whole git for every every project you've got coming off the box, okay? So let's just do git config, and then if we just do global, and then we can do user.name, uh, and let's just call this one um, test name, and then we can do git config uh, dash dash global, and we ha you haven't got to do this if, if you've got a default already on the box that's um, uh, being piped through, but we can map an email address as well, so let's just call this one, um, oh, did not want to do that. Uh, let's just air out that a second. Like that. Okay. Um, now, just to show the differences, if I just do git status, nothing will have changed. But if I do um, a new file, so echo uh, new.md. And I'll do, um, just to show you again, just keep dri driving the home, it's untracked. So I could do uh, git add, um, and I could do the dot, and I could do git. Again, I'll show you. So it's, it's now it's now ready, uh, it's in staging. I can now do git uh, commit with a message, um, switched name, and I just do a git push origin main. Like so, let's go back to the browser. Hopefully I'm not going too fast. Um, okay, so you can see now that this has come up from test uh, name. Again, so if you work in a team, this could be quite confusing because if there's something about one of these commits um, that somebody needs to come and talk to you about, they're not going to know who, um, you know, they're not going to probably know just from sight that these three people are the same person, okay? Um, so let's just go back. Okay, so at this moment, we've been doing a lot of work on the main branch. Uh, let's have a look at what we've been doing. So I'm just going to do one line. And you can see here we've got four commits. At the start of each of these commits, we've got like a char. This is a shortened char, but this is a good reference point for that commit. We can see a message of what happened in that commit. And then I'm going to break down this here. Okay. So this can sometimes confuse people. And as we start adding branches and jumping around um, in a minute or maybe future videos, um, this will start to um, look different and we might be at different points. So let's just quickly um, go through what this means now. So what this is saying here is the head of the local repository is pointing to this commit. It's saying that on the remote, the main branch is also pointing to this commit. And then the head, which is a special term inside Git, um, is also pointed at this commit, okay? Now, if I was to come in here and I was to create a new branch, which I can do, um, and let's actually 
really look at this because there's quite a few um, ways of creating branches and switching to them. Okay, so if I come in here and go uh, git branch, and I call this one dev, okay, this is going to create me a branch, but it's not going to move me to the branch, okay? If I was to do uh, git branch L, just before I do this, like so, you can see that I'm on the main branch, and there's only a main branch in my repository. If I do git branch, I do dev, and I do git branch with the L option, you can see now there's two branches in my local repository, and I'm on the main branch. If I wanted to switch to the dev branch, you'll see um, there's, there's, there's a, a sort of new syntax come out, and there's also an old way of doing this, and both work, uh, and I'll try and um, clarify um, the differences. Um, but we can actually do uh, git checkout dev, like so, and we would just switch to the dev branch. So if I just do um, oh, git branch l, you can see now we're on the dev branch. But there's also a new command where we can actually do git switch. And you might be thinking, well, why is there two commands? And the reason is it's separation of duty. So uh, the git checkout command can actually do a lot of things for us, and it can get quite messy. And what Git have tried to do is they've tried to separate out uh, the creating of branches and the switching between branches with two commands. You can still use the git checkout um, command, um, but it's just really to try and separate um, out you know, the two different um, service roles that these commands are doing. Now, if we were to do git checkout and we use the B option, we could also create a new branch, okay? So we could call this one uh, stage, like that. Now, what's happened here is we've checked out, so, so we switched to stage, but because stage never existed, we've added the B option and we've also created it. So we've done a sort of create and switch all in one command, okay? So if I just do git branch L, you can see now that we're on the stage branch and we've created it. Now, if we go to the browser, and I go to Bob, if I go to branches, you can see we only have knowledge of this one branch on the remote, okay? So what we've done so far is only local, okay? So let's go back to the terminal. Now, let's start doing some work on the staging branch. So I'm going to create a file, echo new file on staging. Get status again, because it's been tracked. Okay, but now it's telling us we're on branch stage and we have untracked files. So we can do git add. In this case here, um, actually it might be too early to start showing you interactive uh, git. So let's just do git add file. And then we'll do a git commit. And then we'll just say um, added file.md. Again, make your commit messages useful. Okay, now from here, if we go look at the uh, git log command, one line, you can see now things have started to change a little bit. Okay, so the origin, if you remember, is the remote repository. Now, the head of the remote repository, okay, so the, so the current position where it's pointing, is also the same as the status of where the main branch in the remote is. And it's also telling us that main and dev branch, if you remember, we had a main and dev branch. It's saying they both, so all the all four of these things are all pointing to the same commit. However, the local repository, the head of the local repository is pointing to, of staging, is pointing to this commit, okay? I hope that makes sense. I know it's going to be uh, quite hard for new people to get their heads around this, okay? 
And then what we could do now is add our, add our file. So we've added our file. We could switch back to our main. And we're now on the main again. So git branch L, there's the main. And if I wanted to, I could do git merge, and then I can pick whatever the branch was that I wanted to merge into the branch that I'm on, okay? So let's merge stage. So what's happened now, if we go to git log one line, we can see that the origin of the head and main branch are still pointing to the same commit. But if you notice, our local head is pointing now to main and stage. It's, it's the same, but dev has been left behind, okay? So you can see before, and you can see after. I hope that makes sense. Now, what we could do is we could uh, do a push to push all this information up. So we could do a git push to origin uh, the main branch, which is now being merged in, okay? So git push main. So now I'll do clear the screen and do git log one line. And we can now see that the remote origin and the remote head is also pointing to the same place as stage and main branch on the local repository marked with the local head here. I hope that makes sense.